scroll. Here's Arrow Sun. There you go. So that is your symbol tool. Okay. So now what we want to do is we are going to go in and we are going to look at First of all, let's kind of review because we were talking previously um, about some auto trace. So we do have in your auto digitizer, you can do a mass auto trace if you want. I know some people like to do that instead of letting it go through with the whole thing. So you can come in, create a new file. When you're in auto digitizer, so let me go in here and get my image. So let's say we start with this one. You can pick anything you want, honestly. Then you can start going next, trace all. Now see how it has an extra color here because it actually sees shadows here. So I'm gonna go and back that off so it only has three colors. I'm going to go to next and see where it says create art segments. I'm going to say create art segments. Hit finish. So it's now auto trace that whole thing. Now what you can do is let's say I have all of this selected. You can actually go in with your node tool. Let's see if it's going to let me do all of these at once. Grab these points. Anybody with me? Make them straight, because again, these shouldn't be curved at the bottom. So we can make them straight. And then you can also go in and align them. So it's going to start making them, right, so click and drag. So again, grab these, make them straight, and align them. Yeah, it wasn't letting me do the whole thing. There's these, grab these here, straight, align. So you've got a lot of extra editing tools that makes this really nice. See if it lets me do all of these. Yeah, only let me do the end. Make these straight. Align. So you can use your extra editing tools up here to easily come in and start to straighten these out. Now the other thing that we can do and again, you have to watch the order that it traced in because that becomes your sewing order. So let's come over here and look at our sequence view. So if you put these in the order that you want them to sew in, so let's say you want to come in here, and actually it's fine, it did this first, and then it's actually doing center out, which is fine, especially if you're doing a hat. So I may just leave that. Now look here, it starts to come in. Here's your P over here. So it's still doing center out, but it's going the opposite way. So I'd probably fix this. So the other thing is this is supposed to be a registered trademark, which is and not really a registered trademark. So let's get rid of that because we can always add one. So let's say we wanted to do here to here to here. So I think it's doing this in the right order. So let's go from here to here. And then we can go right click, cut the clipboard. And now you want to paste it before here. So now it's going center out this way. 
Yeah, really, if this was for a hat, you're right. If it was for a hat, this would sew first. So you'd actually bring this here. So now that's perfect for a hat as far as the order goes. So now what we can do, because we can really cheat, we can grab this whole thing equals a satin path. Then what I can do, remember, shift in the letter Z is auto breakout. Now you still have to go in and make sure that it did it the way you would want it. Um, but again, you've got auto breakup and then you have auto sequence. So with auto sequence, we can actually come in here and as far as the sequencing order, we wanted to do our order. I'm gonna have a do auto start stop, which means it's gonna do closest point then you can add your trim at. So just like you do in your text, you can add a trim at setting, which is normally set for 0.12 in your fonts. So you can set it the same way. I'm gonna have it lock around the trim and use a basic lock stitch. So you can do as much work or as little work as you would like to. Right, like here, if you didn't like the fact that it didn't trim here, you just have to look and see what the distance is. So it's probably not 0.12. Okay, so try measuring the right thing, there we go. Yeah, that's like 0.09, but if that really stuck out at you, you could still come in here, put in a trim. I mean, that's perfectly fine. Right, and along the same lines, because these are now branched, you could go in here, select all of these, come over here, put in that automatic overlap. So anywhere it needed to do an overlap, it will. So it added some extra over here. It added some extra over here. So wherever it needed to go in and add some extra, it did. Right, so you've added speed tools. To be honest with you, that's exactly what you added, is you've added speed tools. Now, the last extra that everyone has that has Illustrator Extreme all the way through Maestro is your graduated densities. So if we come in here and start a new file. So with your graduated densities, you can look at it a couple different ways. So first of all, you can do it as a single pass. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw this. So here is my line. So you're gonna see over here, you've got your density profile. So we can say increasing, decreasing, convex, and concave. So let's go ahead and duplicate these. So we're gonna to go to duplicate. There's our four. And then we can do our distance. Well, these are groups, so let me ungroup these. Ungroup. So we can come in there, there's increasing, decreasing.
convex and concave. So that can be done with your complex fills as well as your satins. Okay. All right. So if we put in, so if we came over here, made this into a complex fill. And then you come over here and you go into your density profile. Now see these lines that are up here? That's what they call a traveling line. So if you start to see them, and usually you only see the traveling lines when you start to take out density. So you do have a traveling route. Again, normally it is along the middle, but again, in cases where you can see it, you can change that to along the edge. So then it's only gonna travel along the edge. Okay. Now, the auto color blend is going to do a double blend. So again, if I were to come in here and draw this again, now I can right click, I can go to auto color blend. So let's say we do increasing and leave it that color, decreasing and make it red. So you're just doing two of them at once. So that's your auto color blend. Does anyone have any questions? Does anyone have any questions on that one? Does anyone have any questions on this or anything else that we've covered? Because the next group of items we cover is going to be for those people who have Artist Plus and Maestro only. So anybody that does not have Artist Plus or Maestro, you are free to log off. And if you want to stay, realize that the next batch of items that we do would not pertain to the software that you have. Does anyone have any questions on any of this before we jump into our Artist Plus? Okay. So I'm going to start closing this. up our artist plus so when we get into our artist plus over here The next thing we want to go ahead and look at are some of the extra fill patterns that we've added here. So the first one we're going to do, so I'm going to draw my circle because we are going to look at our radial fill. So again, with the radial fill, what you're going to see is when you move this item. So see over here, 
these are actually too long. That's why it's trimming. So let's go ahead and change this from a satin to another fill pattern. And then when you start moving this around, see how it's going ahead and radiating out from there. Yeah, it's kind of cool. You can even let some density out of that. So it just depends on the look you're trying to achieve with that. So that is your radial fill. Now the next one that we can do that also starts off with our complex fill. So let's go ahead and make this a complex fill. We can also come in here and you're gonna see underneath our standard, you also have fractal. So here's our fractal fill. And with fractals, if I go ahead and duplicate this, So there's your regular fractal, and you're going to see that when we come in here and we go into our properties for fractals, we can also change this from a normal to a spider. So that is your fractal fills. Now again, along with your complex fills, you also have a wave fill. So again, when we come in here and I'm going to create another oval over here. So we're starting off with our complex fill. Again, I like to do a wave fill with a programmed fill, but you can do it with any of them. So I'm gonna actually go in here instead of standard, I'm gonna pick a program pattern. And then I'm gonna come in here and select one. So here is my pattern. So now what I can do is come over here and instead of straight, I can pick wave. And then as soon as I come into where my angle lines are, you're gonna see it says wave. So once I do that, now I can start to create a curve on top of my shape. Hit your enter key. See how it made that wave? So now it actually went in and made my fill wave. So that is a wave fill. Yes, we can do this without. So we'll put them both up here. So let me duplicate this so you can see them together. So I'm gonna take this wave off. So if we look at this, so this is our original down here and this is that wave. So it's just allowing you to give it a different look. So that is your wave fill. Now, when we get into our satins, so let's go ahead and create a satin with this. So here's the satin. So now what we can do is we can come in here under our types 
And you're going to see we have swirl. And then if I duplicate that, this can also be a dual swirl. So again, remember we have that along the middle, along the edge. So this would definitely be along the edge so you don't see it sewing through. So those are your swirls. Now remember when we were doing our carve fills with our satins and our fills? So you could do either. So we can come in here. Let's do this. So let's go in here. We're going to have some fun with this. So here's this. Remember our drag anchor path? I can just start pulling this up and then pulling this up. So let's go in and put in our angle lines to make this a satin. We're going to change this from a standard to a carved tile. So first of all, when you're in your tab, okay, so we're going to come into the tab. So you see here for your carving type, you have absolute, which is the one that it's doing here. Then you have what's called turning. So now it's trying to turn using those angle lines. Then we have elastic. So elastic, see how it's trying to pull that all the way across? Elastic's actually going to look better. Let's do a different pattern. So let's do something like this. So see how that pulls it all the way across? So it makes it elongated. So that's what elastic is. So here's turning. So it can repeat. And then here's elastic, which stretches it. So again, it's just giving you some options with that carved fill when you're doing it with the satin. Now, we also have our region carving and our line carving. So, with our region carving, first of all, you're going to start off with a complex fill. Then you're going to put in a shape that's going to eventually be a region carving. Here's my region carving. And then you can come in here and grab a pattern. No, oh, this has to be here. I got to pick a carved pattern for this, too. I did it for one. I didn't do it for the other one. So we need a carved pattern here. So what you can see it doing here, if I zoom in here, is it's welding these two together and making one entity. So if I were to come in here with my draw ribbon... So here, if we start to sew this, see it's sewing. Then it gets here. It doesn't stop and go back. It literally welds that into one pattern. 
So again, you wouldn't have to worry about over overlap issues because it's not going to come back and try and fill it in. It welds it together and makes it one entity. So that is your region carving. Let's go and I'm going to take 3D off of here, start another screen because I'm running out of room here. Then we have our line carving. So with line carving, again, very similar to what a region carving is doing, it's going to weld together some items. So I'm going to actually load an image so you can see this. So here's my leaves. So you can actually carve into a satin or a fill. So I'm going to come in here with my satin path. And start to create my shape. Go to close, hit the enter key, tell it where you want to start, where you want to stop, and your angle. Obviously, too long to sew, which is okay. So now we can get our line carving tool. So what you're going to do is start literally putting in lines. So you can hit enter, doesn't matter the order or anything else because it's not actually stitching. It's just telling it where to add the extra needle penetrations. So you're going to come in and put your lines in. So now what we can do is put a box around it all. Generate. So that's what it's ending up doing. So it is literally carving those lines into the satin or the fill. Because obviously if you look outside and you look at a leaf, it doesn't have a black outline around it. It obviously is dimensional. So it's allowing you to create dimensional objects by carving into the satin or the fill. Everybody with me on that? All right. So let's go ahead. We're going to look at a couple things with our next item. So I'm going to come in and go to my import true type. That's fine. Bold. left click, hit the enter key. So it has automatically come in here and created my satin. So let's look at this first. So if we come in here and we look at our angle line here, if I right click here, you can see it's going to let me figure out what angle line I want to do. So I could change this into a miter. going to let me do it. Actually, I think it's going to let me do a cap. It's not letting me do any of these. Do I have multiple things selected? Okay. 
Yeah, it's not letting me do multiples here. Let's do a different one. Let's do our A over here. Doesn't like my multiple lines over here. Here we go. Direction line, right click, miter, generate. It still doesn't want to let me miter that, does it? Let's see if we can get it out of here. Yeah, it's not behaving today. do this. We're going to make it behave. Oh, now it's going to behave. The A should have worked the same way. So why it's not behaving on our A, I'm not sure. But with the custom cornering, it should allow you to go in. I'm going to do a couple of these. So obviously turning makes sense. So let's come in here, change this one to hand sewn. So your hand sewn is cut off. And then let's take this guy and make it a cap. So again, if the shape is actually being nice to us and allowing us to do it, you should be able to do it automatically. If not, you can always go in and instead of doing it that way, I can delete this angle line. If I want to make that a miter or a cap, I can slice into it. So it's whether or not you want to do things by hand or not. So the same thing over here, if you want to come in here and slice it, if you want to make this a cap, again, you can go in with your angle line and delete these. Go in with your slice line. So it's whether or not you can do it automatically or you have to do it by hand. So, right, you could go in here with your automatic overlaps. And again, sometimes it fixes it. So it fixed it a little bit here. In here, you're still going to have to go in and change your angle line a little bit. So there's an automatic and then there's your regular. Now the other thing that we have is your other pull comp. So if I come in here and I select this, so you're used to coming into your pull comp tab and hitting absolute. So remember absolute, but you also have advanced. So when you come into advanced, you're gonna see you have side A or side B so let's say I take off side A so you can kind of see. So see right here, it's only doing one side. 
The other side has none. So you have side A and side B. You can also change the X and the Y. So let's make this a really obnoxious number, 0.05, so you can see it. So see on that side, it's doing, so that is your X, and then you've got your Y. So X is left to right, Y is up and down. So you can change not only the side that it's on, but whether the up and down part is changing or just the side to side. So that's really nice when you're trying to control things. Now, the other thing you have other than pull compensation is push. So if you've ever tried to sew something, so your straight pieces right now, because they're gonna push and become longer, it's actually gone ahead and shortened them. So this is where it ended before. And now it's shortened them because it knows it's gonna push in that direction. So it's automatically allowed you to compensate. So before you would be doing that by hand. Now you have an automatic feature to let you do it for you. And then we have our shape echo, which is kind of fun. So let me take this one. We'll do shape, shape echo on a different page. So a shape echo, just like it kind of sounds, it's going to allow you to echo a shape within a design. So let's say we come in here. I'm going to go to load another image. So let's grab that star we were playing with. So again, well, we can draw it actually with the shape echo because we're going to actually echo the star. So whatever you're going to echo, you're going to draw either with the shape echo tool or you're going to convert a piece of vector art to a shape echo. O to close. So that's a shape echo. So you can kind of see at the bottom, it says that that's a shape echo. Then we can take a piece of vector art. So this next part has to be a piece of vector art. We can draw our shape. If you're really concerned about it being centered, again, you can come in here and center it. And then you're going to take the piece of art and your shape echo, and you have to combine it. When you combine it, it's going to allow you to repeat the shape throughout whatever the object is. And not only can you do that, but you can take a shape echo. Actually, let's leave this one here. And I'm actually going to duplicate and make four more. So that's our original. So we can come in here, go to our echo. And then once you're in here, you can go to your profile and do increasing. Decreasing. and concave. So you've got all of these.
Does anyone have any questions? Again, if you have questions, please post them in the chat box. Again, if you don't have questions, you are free to log off. Again, if you do have questions, please post them in the chat box. Does anyone have any questions? Does anyone have any questions? If we don't have any questions, I'd like to thank everyone for coming and hope we see you on another webinar soon. Thank you.